PVC. PVC. I hope everyone's doing good. Um, I have some records I'm ready to show. So let's get to it. <clears throat> These are going to be the records I'm going to show you for my New York trip. Which was pretty good stuff. Alright. Um, got this one in the thrift store. This is UK's first album. I know it has a couple guys from a couple different bands. I know King Crimson's involved. And, uh, yeah, th this stuff fits for me. This is, some prog is a little bit too proggy for me, but this is a good one, so it's a keeper. I'm glad to have this. This is, um, Double Image, and the album is Dawn. It's on the ECI label. Uh, I got this also. This one's for a dollar at a different thrift store, not a like Goodwill or anything. Um, ECM. Did I say ECI? I meant ECM. I really love the ECM labels too, and the packaging is just so nice. I wish all the sleeves came in sleeves like this. It'd be really great. Um, really cool stuff. Very minimalistic at times, but the two guys in Double Image are the main two dudes, are two professional drummers are very good at it. So, and so I've worked with the Vibra Harp and the Marimba. And there's a sample on the second song on the last, the second song on the second side called Crossing. Um, that is used in a track from Atmospheres, God Loves Ugly. This was really great. I didn't know who this was when I was buying it. I know of the band, The Special, that is known by name. But I don't know much about the two-tone scene or anything until I did some research. And I thought this album was really cool and I dropped it on the needle at Academy Records in New York. And um, I was thought it was really impressed when I dropped it quickly, so I decided to pick it up and it's very interesting. This is the third release called In The Studio with the special AKA. So originally the specials name was special was the special AKA and they changed it to the specials. And then um, a few members of the band left and the main guy Jerry Dammers added a couple guy people, um, a female singer and some other people and brought it back to call him the special AKA. Um, this has that really famous song Free Nelson Mandela, which is probably the most poppy, um, single worthy not single worthy, but the one you hear on the radio the most. Um, other than that, the album can be kind of dark at times, and not just dark, but just really interesting. There's lots of different things going on here, so this is a really good buy. I was really glad I picked this up. Can't have enough Phyllis Hyman. Um, it's my second Phyllis Hyman record, Goddess of Love. Anything that this woman sings on, I mean, she could sing anything in that. She can be given anything and sing it and be great at it, so. This is also the one where she looks the most sexiest in this record, I think. There's a great song on here called um, Your Move My Heart, Falling Star, Just Me and You is another great one. This is on Arista. Arista. Phil Simon. I always think about Zach with this man. Um, I've always seen this record. I know he's shown it and some other stuff. I just want to check it out. This is Harry Nilsson's um, Little Touch of Schmilson in the Night. And man, what a great record. And what a great place to start. And... What a great surprise. I didn't know that this is the type of album I was going to be getting into, and this is sort of like a standards album, and man, it is great stuff. So I highly recommend this. I love the back here at the cover, and all the different boxes and pictures and descriptions for every song. Um, and the fact that it's also with um, Gordon Jenkins is sweet. Gordon Jenkins is my dude, 100% for sure. This one is uh, one I want to like more than I really do. It's I can tell it's a great, it's a good record on its own. It's um, Bobby Rogers is the woman and Jean Bertoni, Berton, Bertoncini called Crystal and Velvet. And he's sort of like the guy who does this really great classical guitar with the woman singing some standards over it. Um, and she's a great voice and it's a really nice packaging. Uh, I just really like the cover. It's from Tree. There's only 50 cents of Goodwill in the city. And uh, it's on this record label called Focus. And um, I, I just don't know if I can like it enough. I can tell it's good, but I just don't know. But, um, you know, it is what it is. This was great. I paid $4 for this at a really particular store. It didn't have too many choices. Um, this is De La Souls. This is the 12-inch single for a song called It's So Easy from their um, Stakes Is High album. And this includes the Stakes Is High remixes. Um, so I bought it right away because it has the remix of Stakes Is High, which is a Jay Dilla production. 
so I want to own anything with Jay Dilla on it on vinyl. So this bottom half right here is actually um, the remix of the song and the instrumental version. And she just only posted a video for that, so that was great. Um, it's you know it's also a really really cool cover with the Marino's Isis and Nutrition Facts. So this is really cool to have. I'm excited to have this for my Jay Dilla collection. Um, the other thing I got from there that was incredible that I think is a, one of my one of, probably one of the most best in terms of quality and price and luck is um, some guy that told me some guy brought these hip hop releases where I got the De La Soul from just the day before. This is um, I got the an original pressing of a Quemini from Outkast for only five dollars. And this when I walked in and saw this in the bottom in the rat in the, in the bottom crate, there's only like two crates and I saw it above with some books above and I was like what? And I was like what are you doing? It's on the Faces label, the Face label, which is Baby Faces label, which is also a TLC to Crease 60 Cool. And this vinyl sounds incredible. The bass is so smooth, so vibrant. This is a really great pressing, even with some of the crackles and pops that it has and it's been played. So if TLC's Crease 60 Cool album sounds as good as that, I can't wait to find that grail and buy it. Um, last but not least, I want to show these last specifically. Um, this was such an amazing find, and this is really exciting for me because it just got me into some new stuff, and I couldn't be more excited about this. I found two great albums on the Capital World label, Capital label. Um, this is two different albums by Edith Piaf, who you might know as the famous French singer. She's pretty much the f most famous French singer in history, and um, they made that movie La Vie en Rose that was at the Academy Awards a lot that year. Um, this is The Late Little Sparrow of France, Piaf at the Olympia. Sort of her, some of her last performances when she was in a really bad spot, you know, physically and just mentally at times. But amazing performance in Olympia and Paris is a big place she performed at. So I got that. And then this is um, studio recordings, more PF of Paris. Great, great cover. I can't, I, I don't want to go too long because I got a lot of records to show, but I can spend more time talking about these records. But it's just, this is just incredible music. Such incredible music. I think this is one of the coolest live recordings I've ever had. Um, so I highly recommend if you find any EFP after all you can because it's special, man. It's real special. These are all good little finds after New York trip. Um, this is the Alan Parsons Project, the best of the Alan Parsons Project. I didn't listen to it all yet because this is more recent, but it's a really cool packaging. And it shows stuff after the first album, which I didn't only have the first album with the Edgar Allan Poe stuff. So it has stuff from my robot and Eve and um, the turn of a friendly card and pyramid so this is pretty cool good to have this is a pretty good record right here I've seen it in stores and stuff I got it cheap on 50 cents introducing the hard line according to Terence Trent D.R.B. Most people, most people might know this record for a little bit older than me from 1987 it's really great R&B, and it gets a lot of credibility in terms of the album for itself being really great at the time. I found a sealed copy of Dory Previn's last album she put out, except for the exception of this one album later, years and years later on, with it was a, um, a download only. So this is really her last official album, final. Um, We're Children of Coincidence and Harpo Marx. And it's sealed. I haven't opened it yet, but I probably will. This was really cool. I'm excited to listen to this. These are the ones I haven't listened to too much. I saw this. The Complete Musical Score it's by Harry Chapin. And I saw the beginning first and I was like, this looks, what is this? It's called The Cotton Patch Gospel. And I looked in the back and saw Harry Chapin on there. So I was like, oh great, because I love Harry Chapin. I think he's a great, great storyteller. I um, love his songs. And this is actually the last album, he, last material he wrote. It came out the year that he died. Um, and it's he did all the music for this... Um, Broadway show or something was put together and it's Con Patch Gospel so it's like the story of Jesus but taking place in like early 1900s um, Atlanta or somewhere around there like Georgia Atlanta somewhere so this is this is awesome this is like I mean you can't this isn't even on Harry Chapin's discography on Wikipedia but if you look it up on its own you'll see that it is an actual I mean it's all it's all music by him so this is a really cool Harry Chapin find the find. I, I would never even known about this. This is really interesting. 
Um, I found that, you know, I found the Melanie Live album recently at Carnegie Hall. Well, this is Melanie's album, it's considered her best. I just figured I'd get it. It's called Gather Me. I still need to listen to it more, but it is considered um, by online by her as her best. And I found out that that Neighborhood Records label I love, with the great vinyl, is actually her own label. It's a beautiful, beautiful label. Michael Jackson Thriller. Just never had an actual copy of Michael Jackson on final yet, so why not? It's in good shape. History of Otis Redding. Now, this is kind of poppy and stuff, and I knew it wasn't going to play that well, but I still bought it because it has the old Volt label. And I really, you know, I've shown the Steve Cropper record I have. And I love that Volt label, and it's like my favorite label. I think it's the most prettiest label ever. Super, super handsome. And so this is like an older version of the Volt label, so I thought it was really cool for 50 cents. I figured I'd just pick it up for that alone. Of course, it's, I really need to get some good Otis Redding. I don't have enough, I don't have any Otis Redding. I really should buy his, his albums. Um, someone should let me know if they have any of the re-releases, how they are. But this is cool still, because it has some great classics on there. This one, my first time experiencing these guys, and it was great. Um, Crosby, Stills, Nash, and Young. This four-way street, the live album. And I just thought it was a great, great live album as well, on the same level that Edith Piaf. Two great live albums I have now. Um, first album has acoustic, it's all acoustic. Second album um, is the live album. I mean, sorry, the electric album. So the acoustic has some great songs. Um, Southern Man is like the big, big one on this record. It's like a 13, 14 minute song of just um, young and still just going back and forth at it. And it's really, really great guitar playing. So this is a really great live record. I'm glad to have this. This is Blood, Sweat, and Tears, New Blood. So this is the later album, I guess, when they had some new guy, a guy who left and had a new, um, new person in the band. I, I actually really enjoyed this record. I thought it was some really cool stuff. I really enjoy what they did on this album. It's the only one I have at the studio. The only thing I have is the like, greatest hits album of theirs, and I don't listen to it too often, but I really enjoy this. I always think the cover is really nice, too. Really cool cover. Um, but yeah, I thought this had some really great stuff on here. I like their sound. I think sometimes they're really good at what they do. So I can see why people would enjoy Blood, Sweat, and Tears. But uh, I think this is a great record of theirs, even with a different lineup. So... Oh, and the last two here um, are both albums I haven't listened to and spun yet, but they're in great shape, and that's why I'm excited about them, because I need to play these bad boys. My first, um, Santana's I own on vinyl. This is Santana's um, self-titled, the third record. The only Santana I've ever listened to growing up in college was the Braxis, which I loved, so I'm sure I'll like this, because I like all Santana I've heard. And then I have one that was an album or two later, which is Santana's Caravanserai. They're both nice fold outs. Maybe I'll spin these ones afterwards. And last but not least, the one you've been listening to is um, The Worst of Jefferson Airplane. I don't have any Jefferson Airplane. I don't listen too much. The only ones I ever knew is really Somebody to Love and White Rabbit. So, this is cool to have. And the record plays just fine. A little poppy, but nothing serious. That stuff doesn't bother me. It's on the RCA label, and it has the old traditional um, Victor label. It's really cool what it's playing right now. And this little Best Buy series thing up here, which I'm sure is not on all their stuff. but So, that's all I got. A lot of records there. Number 31. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Um, send all my regards to all of you, and I will see you soon. One love.